When Cressida Cowell was younger, she used to go on quite extraordinary family holidays. They would get into a boat and be taken to a tiny island off the coast of Scotland, so tiny, didn't even have a name. They would be left there on their own. There were no shops, no phones, no electricity. They had to read by candlelight at night. They had to make up all their own fun and fish for food. Cressida spent hours and hours drawing and writing. And her dad would tell her stories of the Vikings that were there long ago. And as Cressida explored the caves along the coastline, she imagined there were dragons. No doubt these holidays gave the young Cressida thousands of ideas for stories and drawings. And as she began to write, out came the ideas. And she wrote and she wrote and she wrote. And now she is a world famous author. She wrote the How to Train Your Dragon series, which have been made into world famous films. She's also written a wonderful series called The Wizards of Once, which is all about magic. Cressida believes that magic is very important for children. For if you believe in magic, you can change your world. We're going over to Cressida now, and she's going to tell you how you can imagine a story world of your own. Hello there, I'm Cressida Cow, and I am the author and the illustrator of the How to Train Your Dragon books and also the Wizards of Once series uh, and I'm also the Waterstones Children's Laureate and I'm here today to give you a masterclass into creativity, creativity tips, how, how you can uh, be be as creative as possible. And my first creativity tip would be to keep a notebook. To keep a notebook. I always, I often go into schools and say, would you like to have a special book? Who would like this? A special book where you can write whatever you want and the teachers cannot mark it. No rules, no marking, just fun. And so many people put up their hands because um, wouldn't that be wonderful? Um, and in that particular book, keep a notebook where your spelling doesn't matter, your handwriting doesn't matter, you can just write whatever you want and you can make up games and, and things like that. I'm going to show you some of my uh, notebooks. You see, this is the notebook that I kept, can you see it, a long, long time ago when I was just starting to write my very first book that I ever had published and I was at art school and you can see how I just it's quite messy but that doesn't matter you can see how I'm just sticking down ideas in the notebook and scribbling things and I'm actually thinking of ideas for my very first book it was a book um, called Little Bo Peep's Library Book and um, there are books there are pages in this book where you have little books that you can, that look like bookshelves and you can have little books that you can take out like that. You can see how in that sketchbook, I am working that out, but it's quite scribbly. Look, there's lots of scribbles in it as well and little ideas for characters. Um, but you can see how um, that, that, that page where you can just take out the book ended up in the real picture book looking like this. This is the page where you can take out the book. But I've already worked it out in my sketchbook. Um, and so keeping a sketchbook is a really, an ideas book, is a sort of way you can sort of work out how to do things. And in my sketchbook, I would often be also um, trying to work out what happens on each page. So here, later on in my sketchbook, I've worked out the story ideas on each page. I've even got a page where I've, I've, put, I've written down everything that happens in the whole book, all in little little thumbnail sketches where I'll, where I'll put that. Not quite find it. Yes, here, you see? I put every single page in the book all worked out. And then often what I will do is I will make 
an actual little book of the of the um of, of the picture book you see this is just torn up bits of paper that i have i have made <laughs> look like a book you can do this at home get your mum or your dad or your or somebody some adult to just tear out some pages for you and cut up some pages for you and you can make your own book and write bits of the story on each different page um, it helps you work out the story or in this book for example this was going to be a um, pop-up book called Super Sue and here I've actually cut out the paper and made my own pop-up so you see it, Super Sue can chew her shoe you can see how I'm making her chew her shoe in the book or Super Sue plays peekaboo. Peek I've just cut out those pieces of paper. So you can do this at home. It's really easy. It's fun to make pop-ups and things like that. Quite easy to do. Super Sue can jump and leap. See what? Oh, <laughs> that's a, a jumpy up. See whether you can make a pop-up book. Um, or... It doesn't have to be a pop-up book, but that's quite, they're quite fun to do. And that's Super Sue singing. Let me see. Um, so, so it's quite easy to make little books like this. Um, and you can see in this particular ideas book, I've also got the very first idea of, that's the very first picture I ever did of this just there and that's the very first picture I ever did of Stoic just there all started in this very scribbly little book um, so the things that you do here and now who knows what may happen I had a lovely teacher in year three who um, called Miss Mellows who let me have a special book I could write whatever I wanted and the handwriting didn't matter because I was very messy when I was a little girl and um, and I sometimes struggled with the spelling and things like that um, but this one particular book she let me write whatever I wanted um, and that was a turning round point for me um, it made me realize that I really enjoyed writing I, I loved writing stories before then I was just worried that my handwriting wasn't good enough that my spelling wasn't good enough but in that those books those special magical ideas books I learned how to be a writer so why not get yourself any old old book like this one um, or this one which was the big book I kept uh, in order to write the Wizards of Once that was the big book in which I scribbled down ideas and drawings. Um, do you see? There it is. That's the idea for a sprite and for that I did lots of research into looking at wonderful peregrine falcons and things like that. And do you see how the sprite is sitting on its back? I drew that drawing though before I'd even thought of the idea for the story. And, and this poem I wrote, I just scribbled down this poem um, which doesn't even appear in the books, but it was just me getting in, trying to get into the world. Um, so I've written once upon a dark time when England was all wild woods and the woods were full of whispers and eyes of witches stared from every hollow trunk. And I wrote that down and that doesn't appear in the book, but it gets me into the idea of what the world is going to be. So that's a, a first tip about how to, how to get started. Now, in How to Train Your Dragon, um, Hiccup finds this very naughty little disobedient hunting dragon called Toothless. And I'm going to show you how to draw Toothless while also teaching you a little bit of Dragonese, okay? Which is the language that dragons speak to one another. Um, uh, and if you've got an adult in the room with you, like a teacher, for instance, you have to get them to put their hands over their ears because this is not a suitable language.
for adults. They are way too sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So has your adult got their hands over their ears? Have they? Okay. Then I'll teach you a little dragon ease. This is toothless. And notice, you see, I've got, he's got a very naughty little expression on his face. A little bit, look, his eyebrow is just going up like that. As if he's thinking of something naughty to do. Yes. He's got a little wart on the end of his nose. And this is the, the smoke coming out of his nostrils. But you will see when I teach you the Dragonese why he is so naughty. Okay. Has, has your teacher got their hands over their ears? Okay. I'll teach you how to how to speak some Dragonese. Nea quapa in a dehusish pishu, which means no pooing inside the house, please. Me mama, na like it, yum yum on de bum, which means my mother does not like to be bitten on the bottom. I mean, I don't blame her. Uh, you can see why, <laughs> see why uh, Toothless is so naughty. Um, pishu, kindly, gobba, oot, me free only. Please would you be so kind as to spit out my friend. That's to a larger dragon, actually. And there you are, you see, there is my little toothless dragon. He's about the size, he's quite small. He's just, he's a bit smaller than, he's about the size of a chihuahua, I suppose. Oh, I've nearly forgot his little spines on his back. There you are. Oh, you can tell your teacher they can take their hands off their ears now. Nothing happened here, did it? <laughs>